So we have been, uh, I believe, very blessed for the last 18 months. I know I've been blessed for the last 18 months. Uh, to have a friend, uh, a fellow ministry partner, uh, someone that I could count on, and someone that we could all count on, to be the steward of our adult ministries. And we always do that's what it is, right? It's not Stan's adult ministries, it's not Scott's, it's not Bruce's, it's God's. And we're simply called to be stewards. But I don't think I could have asked, I know I couldn't have asked, for a better steward. For someone that's moved this ministry forward. For someone that has uh, allowed for ministry to grow. Uh, that I truly consider a friend and a mentor for me. So, um, you know, this is, you guys know, is, is Stan's last month's breakfast. And so I want to open it up to, to you guys to share a little bit about... Um, about Stan and what he's been to you and, and how God's used him in your life uh, to move your ministry in your life forward. Because uh, I know he's moved my mine forward. So I want to first say thank you. Thank you, brother. It's the floor is y'all's. So let's talk about Stan a little bit. <laughs> The good, the bad, the Santa Claus. You um, realize we're supposed to be done in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Better hurry. Yeah, so, feel free. Your testimony moved me to no end. To this day, when I watch it, I'll cry every time. So, I, I love that much. <clears throat> I've known Stan for many, many years, and he is wife and family and all his kids and he's been just an inspiration and a blessing to to me and my family and uh, I, I so appreciate him um, back when we had the Broccoli Life Group uh, it was, I mean most of the time we had Life Group at your house and it was, it was just an incredible time and um, I know I grew in my walk with the Lord because I did too Thank you so much. Uh, that's when that's when life group was our house was just down the street from the school where we were meeting. Right. And we we have 20, 30 people for life group because yeah. it was a family group. Yeah. Awesome. My first time coming to Christ Fellowship, one of the very first people I met was the front door of the state. Mm -hmm. <coughs> made me feel so welcome, both myself and my wife. We uh, said to ourselves then, you know, this is where we want to be. So, I appreciate that. You're quite welcome. This is a, this is a neat church. And uh, we learned a lot about being more open and welcoming just by being a part of the family. Well, and I think it's a neat church because of people like you, Sam. I mean, they, you know, I, I haven't known you all that long, two or three years, but, you know, I look at you as a, as a guy who sets an example for all of us, because you give, and you give unconditionally, and you love us all, and we know it, and it's always very clear, and when I, I you know, I sit in the video cafe every week, and I watch you work in the Main Street, out there and seeing people, and greeting people, and talking to people, and, and when I think back to all the churches that I've attended over my lifetime, one of the reasons why I love it here so much is because of people like you who make this a warm, welcoming place. It's not fake, it's not phony, it's not slap you on the back and say, oh, glad to see you and then never talk to you again. Even though it took you, like, you know, a year to learn my name. I have Stan, and I am horrible with names. It's not even nice, I don't get it. But I've worked on Gabe, I met Gabe this morning, and I've been out to use Gabe's name a couple of times. So when I do that, I learn. So thank you. My list of names is long. Thank you for being here, Stan. We're going to miss you a lot. That's just so Well, when Barbara and I came to Christ Fellowship, I think about five years ago, uh, one of the first things that we knew we needed to do was join a life group, and uh, of course we didn't know any names or anything, but one of them, I, I don't know why we picked it now, but uh, we, we ended up going to the life group that Stan led, and uh, 
and of course, of course, it was nice that you know he came from my hometown. Uh, you don't find that a lot, but uh, you know, Stan and Ernestine both uh, made Barbara and I feel very welcome, and uh, we certainly enjoyed our time in that life group. And and of course, I say you. Did you know what the man said? Two to your left is from Wichita, also. Oh really? <laughs> oh, how about that? There are three of us. <laughs> so maybe the Shockers will do better this next year. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, Stan through the men's ministry and everything, you've really been a blessing. Stan, I want to echo Dan's comment. Um, in, in a lot of ways, you represent uh, this church. I mean, I. I don't remember a time when you weren't here, right? Um, I can't, you know, you and I s started very early. Uh, wait, 90. You got here just after. Just, just after. Just after. So you're here about 97, 98, right? Um, Christmas won't be the same if you're not here, so you yes, have to right. come back. <laughs> um, you know, choir, uh, everything, <laughs> we've, all the ways we've ministered together has just been fantastic. You have so many gifts, uh, it's hard to just limit them to a few, but um, I would say that your ability to tell the truth in love is phenomenal, <laughs> right? Uh, you couldn't hurt someone's oh, feelings if you... <laughs> <laughs> this is a safe place, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and of course, we all know your humility and your love, uh, but you're just a, a true example, and you lead by example. So, uh, just uh, you're, you're just an unforgettable guy, um, and uh, please come back and see us often. We plan on. Our daughter will still be here, and uh, you guys are still here. We'll be we'll be back every once in a while to, to visit, pop in, either on Friday morning or the second Saturday of the month. By the way, it's the third Saturday next month. Yeah. Second Saturday is World Cultures Weekend. Highly recommend everybody come to that. Our missionaries are going to be in town. It's a great opportunity. It's a, cool. it's a good weekend. So we're moving to the to the third uh, to the to the third Saturday next month. I got a quick story. Um, okay. When I first we started meeting with Stan to talk about and that was just an industry. That's we met at a <coughs> You know, we're just in there talking, very business like, and, and all of a sudden you see this little head on the other side and this slowly come up and look at Stan. And it was, it was December when we started meeting. And Stan immediately just his demeanor changed. And I, I, I kid you not, there was a sparkle in his eye. As he just simply said, hi there. And she, her head goes back <laughs> down. And I know that she went back one. I saw Santa Claus. <laughs> and he said hi to me. Um, and and it's one of those things, like Evan and others have said, just, that ability to, to connect in so many ways. Um, and I don't know if a lot of you all know, but one of the stands of the ministries that he does is, uh, I don't know how many years he does, there's two going down as a children's. Children's medical. This would have been my fourth year. Fourth year going to children's medical on Christmas Day, right? Christmas morning. And delivering presents to the kids uh, that are in, in the hospital that aren't going to be there at their homes. And, um, and what, I, what I know and what I love about this is that it's not like, uh, one, it's not like, look at me, right? So that's why he's not someone sharing what I am. And secondly, uh, he does it to see the, the joy and to share the love of Christ. And, um, and I know that, that they, they see it. So thank you. Yeah. I know that uh, when I first met you and I first got your business card and let Santa Claus on it, <laughs> I was like, uh, it, it brought back warm childhood memories mm -hmm. to when I was little. When I was little, I grew up with the first thing. Because I was around the tree with my family and the presents. But, uh, you know, I always was fascinated by the character because then the cost was so different to the children. And when I had the opportunity, when, when I'm with, with, with kids, um, it comes up sometimes. And I'm able to say it specifically this Santa loves Jesus. Good. Now, Stan, since we're, you know, Scott was talking about goal setting, have you found a hospital up in Kansas for you to do wow. the same thing with? No, but Matt. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is on my, that is, that is what I was even sitting out here thinking about it. I don't know if my old contacts are still around, but I will, I will find a service place. Thanks, really. They'll find you. They'll find you. Okay, so, uh, so I, I think we've been at the church a little over two years, and so we started coming in February. It was right before the men's retreat. So I didn't know anybody, but knew that the men's retreat would be an interesting, you know, place to go and meet. So a buddy of mine, Mike, and I showed up at the retreat and uh, started asking around, you know, where can we help, how can we help, and that stayed. Uh, and, you know, uh, in your walk, in your life, there are men that you are just, there's something about them, right? You're drawn to them. And you may not know why. And, whoops, you know, yeah, my allergies are kicking in. Yeah. My eyes might malfunction here. So, and that's Stan. And I think Stan would agree with this in the sense that what it is about Stan is that, he, oh, man, that's hard. He represents Christ. He, 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 the light of Christ shines through him. And so we're drawn to that. And, 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 and yeah, you know, God, some of you guys have said it. He's a wonderful representative of what we all should be striving to do. Cruising Main Street, looking for faces. I mean, and Stan, so Stan is blessed in that way. And, and, and I know he would admit that is, that is Christ in him. And so, you know, I've got to be, uh, my faithful saying is, I've got to be Stan's helper here for the last <laughs> year and a half or two. And it's, and it's just... It's a wonderful thing to be uh, to see that and to, to get involved with the church at that level. And by just simply saying, uh, how can I help? And I remember being at, in the gym at Pine Cove when you and Mike walked up mm -hmm. and said, what can we do? And that was the first time I met you. And uh, we've been, we've, we've had, we've had a connection ever since. And it's just yeah. gotten deeper, better, but just, just being willing to say, how can I help? How can I do? And connecting with other guys. And that is worth it. That's what I really... That's what I'm going to miss. Here. Well, Stan and I go back, uh, gosh, back to the late, late 90s. Go back to the life group. <laughs> yeah, we've gone through I don't know, countless countless life groups together. Uh, we just done, we just done life together over the last I guess five years or so. I, I, I'm, my memory's nowhere you know, pale down here. His, he remembers everything except for me. We go we go we go have dinner every 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 Friday night. It's his wife and my wife and the, the two of the, the four of us. And we end up just having, having a good time, just, just doing life together. Uh, as Scott said, around Christmas time, you know, it, there's all kinds of kids that come up. And they're just changed. And he just changes. And it's just a, a great thing to experience. Um, my wife and I have, have been blessed to be able to lead Christmas Carry Angels for the last eight, nine years for this church. And I hit a jackpot when, when, <laughs> when my partner here, right along, right along with, with, with Ernestine, had been doing with us. I mean, we're partners. We're not, we're not, I'm not leading alone. I'm, I'm losing my, my partner here. Well, you know, back when we started doing Christmas Carry Angels, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't Santa Claus, it was Kojak. <laughs> because there was there was a, there were four or five years in there where I was clean shaven all the way around. That's right. He, he, most of you probably, some of you don't remember that. But, <laughs> but then, you know, my whole family, all my brothers and sisters, are white haired. We got that from our daddy. But you know, I'm I'm blessed that way. I found a way to to use that and. That's one. That's one. Of, that's a big joy in my life. To, 
to go to hospitals or to nursing homes uh, and do it, you know, just to, to make people smile. And it's even, it's even neat when I remember uh, two years ago, I was loading groceries in Walmart in the parking lot, and I'm just putting some bags in the back of the car. This lady walked up, she said, I wonder if you could do me a favor. And I said, what's that? She says, I've got three kids over here in the car. It's, it's about four days till Christmas. It's about December 21st or something. And she says, I've got three kids over here in the car. They've not been behaving very well. <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> and to this day, that was such an incredible um, experience to see, you know, how how the kids responded to you and your love for them, and how you then, you know, to spend time with each one of them. It was awesome. There is a. It was a. It happened in Walmart one Sunday evening, and uh, I was just. Checking out, and I was walking out the door, and this little girl walked up to me. She said, "Can I tell you what I want for Christmas?" <laughs> she said, "I said, yeah." She said, "I need a new wheel for my bicycle." That, that hit me. Oh, man. was Mama and Daddy listening? What do you think you do about it? Yeah, you know, she didn't want a new bike. She just wanted a wheel. There's something out there. Big thing you'll see it on the table. This isn't my first foray into men's ministry at this church. Um, back in 2001 and 2, I helped lead the retreats. I wasn't, I wasn't the leader of the ministry, but I, I did the uh, coordination for the retreats. And um, it was always something that I, I, I felt a passion for guys being able to to grow in their life, to connect with the guys, to just to talk with talk with you, to work with you, to watch you uh, uh, figure out things. I'm like I figure out things. Uh, what it what it means to, to grow in our walk. What it means to to show Jesus to other people what it means to, uh, to, to just grow spiritually. And uh, uh, I've grown just like, like you all have. And it has been an honor and uh, a privilege to, uh, to be associated with you. The, uh, God's done a, in a short period of time, I had, I had hoped that 
when I took over men's ministry, I knew at one point when I retired that we would probably go back to Kansas. Uh, but I figured I would have a couple of years, maybe two or three years, to work in the ministry here before before we went off. My goal to retire was December of next year. And uh, I received one of those opportunities to, to retire early. And uh, <clears throat> when I went home to talk to my wife, tell her what, what happened, the part that I was most upset about wasn't the loss of a 28-year career. It was, I said, I don't understand. God orchestrated moving me into men's ministry when he did in the way he did in his way and in his time. Why is he taking it away from me? That took a couple of months for me to work through. But I see that for my family, and for specifically my wife's health, that this is this is something we're supposed to do. I also know that nobody's irreplaceable. God will bring in the next person. And uh, I'm looking at Scott in a red shirt. Scott, you should have a beard. And and I found out about all this the Wednesday before the retreat this year. And it just I had to just lock it down. I had to, I had to tie it down and not let that overwhelm. Where we were going into, we were in the home stretch of going into the retreat, and uh, and of course it was it was on my mind, but I couldn't let it just overtake what we were doing. And uh, but I received a, uh, some good advice, a good thought from Walter Kirk, and uh, Walter teaches a Tuesday night Bible study here. Now um, he said, stand. He said, God's just clearing the decks for you to do something else. And he is. I understand that. So we're looking forward to, to what God's going to do next. Uh, we did buy a house. We're going back to Wichita, Kansas. We, that's home for us. We, uh, we bought a house and we closed on it last week. This week, the movers came and packed up our house and loaded the truck. We're leaving after men's breakfast today go up there. Uh, they'll make a delivery on Tuesday. We'll spend a few days getting get the stuff at least into the house. So we we'll shut the doors. <laughs> and we'll be back for a couple of weeks while we do some renovations, while I run some projects and some renovations on the house here. And probably we'll leave the, between the 3rd and the 5th of November if my smart goals all come out. <laughs> I nailed this one. <laughs> I've got everything down almost for the hour. Um, and so this is like this will be my, my last minute breakfast. But uh, I I want to also thank the guys who uh, have been uh, serving with me in various things. I mean, Doug, meeting you, you you're always you're always Johnny on the spot when X Men need help or something. And you're able to cut loose because God blessed you to give you some time to do some things. And, Bill Hedgepath, Bill, would you raise your hand? Bill recently retired from uh, law enforcement. That's that's a side point. But what he did for them is he's got a peculiar skill set that is going to God's going to use it here. He's really going to be the coordinator for the X Men. The goal was to take the X Men uh, to the to the next level of service. And uh, for those of you who don't know, X-Men, you know, it started off as I, I get calls when he's standing. Can you find some guys? We need somebody's moving. Somebody's got this. We've got a project at the church. Uh, needs help you know, in the, tomorrow. And the concept of the X-Men came up where we're able to blast out emails about specific projects. And that was just, that's just version one. But going forward, um, Bill had uh, lunch, Bill and I talked uh, at late. Uh, he had lunch with Ken Stone King this week. And uh, 
talking about how to move X Men forward in service to the community. And uh, there's going to be some really, really neat things going on that way. So, uh, Bill's going to become more uh, uh, known to people. And uh, so, watch for him. And he's going to be communications. And he'll be, he'll be the liaison person for those things for 3E, for uh, Go and Be. For, for whatever X Men is going to be involved in, they're going to develop a plan to take it forward in a, in a real good fashion. So, if you've got a heart for that, that's a good way to connect with people and just uh, get to know other guys so we can get to impact the community and show the love of Jesus. Sam, what church are you going to be attending with? Well, by default, I guess we're going back to the church we came from. It's right. not default, it was a great church. Yeah. But uh, we've still got a ton of friends there. And uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's Asbury Church. It's, it's a United Methodist Church. But they're more like a Baptist church than they are like a Methodist church. They are Bible, Bible believing, a very solid uh, evangelical church. Would it be okay to come visit you? Sure. <laughs> sure. In fact, one of the things I want to do, you know, Sam's ministry here is in name, obviously. But Sam's ministry is just beginning, right? That's what I love in our conversations. Stan's already been looking at <coughs> websites for the church. Well, where, where, where is our business? What, what's going on? Maybe I, to, maybe I need to take what I've learned here and take it there. So what I'd like to do is, uh, ironically, what Stan did about 18 months ago, when we commissioned you as business director, I'd like to commission them from our church back to Wichita. So I'd like to, uh, but anybody would like to come up and lay hands on Stan? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna,